going to take a few minutes here to talk about using the TAC device by Philips in critical limb ischemia cases in particular. My disclosures. So the goal is to talk about the, the time and the need to have a focal tool that helps you with dissection repair specific to PAD interventions. So before having this device in our armamentarium, most tibial dissections, which are sort of inevitable, especially in long CTOs of tibial interventions, were using coronary balloon expandable bare metal stents. Now, that being what we had at the time, it seemed like uh, it works fine, the data seems to be pretty well, but in fact, we'll talk about at the end here, that's not the right tool for this type of application. So having a dedicated scaffold that is meant for dissection repair really has changed the game, but let's take a look at what happens before we had it. This is just a brief case, a patient with a TMA that was not healing, as you can see in the middle picture. You can see in the initial angiograms, there's very poor runoff. There's a reconstituted anterior tibial artery, and on the far right, you see that there's very poor flow. But after a complex recanalization, which required anti-grade and retrograde access, as well as a reentry device in the tibial, uh, ballooning was necessary. And as most of us know, you're going to end up with a dissection. And that's after ballooning. You can see in the run, you can see the, the shelf-like area of the dissection. It's a little bit of a spiral and dissection. And at the time, uh, the only option I have here is ballooning more, which we tried, and then putting in a coronary drug loading stent, which works, but it's not ideal. The pictures do well. The patient did heal, but we know that it's going to recur. And you can see that the patient wanted to heal. Uh, the issues with this is the basic concept of this is it's a stent that's meant for recoil. That's what was used at the time and what we've been using. Rather, we have here a, a dissection, which is a tear, and having a device that actually tacks up the tear rather than just stenting an unnecessary length of vessel, that's kind of the goal of what we should be trying to do, and that's what this device addresses. So going on to a case where now we're utilizing this type of technology, it's a patient in the 60s. Uh, the comorbidities that we see in most of our patients had uh, a wound in the toe that progressed uh, with not healing. And at the outside hospital, there was no intervention warranted based on what they saw and what they could do. As you can see, the inflow to this vessel works uh, pretty well. The perfusion is adequate. However, there is some disease in the distal uh, popliteal, the mid popliteal, as well as the proximal anterior tibial, if you look at the last two images. Now, one of the things that we've learned as we've progressed in PAD interventions is what you see on angiogram, which is a two-dimensional view, doesn't always paint the exact picture of what we're seeing. And that's where IVIS comes in to uh, help, and a lot of us have improved the delivery of our care. And if you look at these IVIS images, you can see how much more uh, uh, disease there is. There. It's not a very calcified vessel, as you see in the static image, but you can see there's a significant amount of, of stenosing plaque in the vessel, and you can see how much lumen you actually do have. And therefore, uh, ballooned it with standard high-pressure balloons. Sometimes I like to use scoring balloons. And also the anterior tibial artery, as you see in the middle image, and the angiogram afterwards on the right. Now, if you don't pay that much attention, you could say it looks pretty good. But when you use IVIS, what you true find in that far-right image is there is a dissection flap. And to me, as well as most experienced operators, that is a significant flap. And so when you mag up in the middle image, you can really see where that area is. And before having this device, this would get a coronary bare uh, metal drug loading stent. However, having the right tool here, as you can see, two of the tacks were deployed in exactly the fashion I wanted. I can stack them uh, a little bit closer than how they deliver. I can spread them out a little bit, but there's enough tacks in that one deployment set to cover the area I needed. And in the end, what I get is a nicely tacked vessel without having an unnecessary stent. This is a self-expanding device, so it conforms to the vessel size. So rather than having to choose a balloon expandable stent with different uh, lengths that are not meant for the periphery, they're meant for the coronary circulation, I have something that I can pick and choose where I want to deploy them and take care of my uh, disease state. Here, as you can see, when you mag up nicely in the SFA, or if you had looked at IVIS, you would see that there is a significant dissection there. And whether or not I want to use drug eluting technology here, which most of us would use, rather than putting a stent, I can use the tacks exactly where I want to tack up those flaps. So whether if you have a focal area of a dissection flap or you have a spiraling dissection, it's nice to have focal treatment of the actual injury and therefore you get a better result. You can still use your drug eluting balloon if you want to before drug coated balloon and then tack it. Um, that's what some of the studies have shown and that's what I chose to do here. So after ballooning it with a drug coated balloon, then I put the tack device to take care of the dissection. And as you can see, completion, you do see a great angio now. Some people would have left it alone, but that's why we have IVIS, that's why we have devices now to really further enhance improving wound care and preventing the patient from losing uh, their limb because we know limb is life.